let's talk about a concept that probably confuses chemistry students the most on some level. But on some level, it's also one of the simplest concepts. And that's the idea of a mole, which in chemistry is different than the thing digging up your backyard or, or the thing you want to get removed from, from your left eye. A mole in chemistry is just a number. It's just a number, and the number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So it's a very huge number, and this is also called Avogadro's number. Maybe I'll do a video on Avogadro. Avogadro's number. But that's all you need to know. A mole is just a number. There are kind of more Byzantine definitions of a mole. This actually is not the fit. Let me actually let me copy and paste it from, from Wikipedia, the more. This is this is the Wikipedia's definition of a mole. And hopefully at the end of this video you'll see that they're equivalent, but if you're just getting exposed to the concept this to me is a very is a very almost it's just a, not a easy concept to, you know, they say a mole is defined as the amount of substance of a system that contains as many elemental article as many elemental entities as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. Well, I just told you that a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So if you just take the, the last part, atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. So that means that there are one mole, one mole of carbon 12. Let me write it like that, carbon 12. There are one mole of carbon 12 atoms in 12. 12 grams of carbon. And so that's why a mole is useful. So when I, you know, I could have just written, instead of written one mole, I could have written, I could have replaced this as there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms, carbon 12 atoms, and 12 grams of carbon. How do you figure that out? Or, or I guess, what, what, what else does this mean? I mean, I, we just had in carbon, they said it's the amount of substance of any molecule if you know, if you convert between atomic mass units and grams. This I find very confusing. How can we apply this in other places? So the first thing to realize is a mole is just a way of translating between grams and atomic mass units, right? One carbon-12 atom is what? How much, what's its atomic, what's its mass number? It's 12, right? That's why it's called carbon-12 instead of carbon-14. So its mass is 12 atomic mass units. So if you have something that has a mass of 12 atomic mass units, and you have a mole of them, or you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of them, it will, that, all of those atoms combined will have a mass of 12 grams. So another way to think about it is 1 gram, 1 gram is equal to 1 mole of atomic mass units. Atomic, I'll write AMUs like that. Or you could write 1 gram is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atomic mass units. And the reason why this is useful, and it, it's kind of addressed in this Wikipedia definition there, is it helps us translate between the atomic world, where we deal with atomic mass units, and we deal with, you know, we got an extra neutron now, let's add another atomic, let's add one to our atomic mass number, and translating between that atomic world and our everyday world, where we deal in grams. And just so you know, I mean, a gram is still a pretty small amount of of mass. I mean it's one thousandth of a kilogram. A kilogram is about two pounds. So this is about one five hundredth of a pound very so this is this is not much. So there's a ton of atoms in a very small amount of, of, of you know in one gram of carbon, or at least in twelve grams of carbon, you have a ton of atoms. You have six point oh two times ten to the twenty three. And just to hit the point home, I probably should have talked about this in the atom. I mean this is a huge number and to I don't know, to maybe visualize it is if you think of, if you, you know, I was, I was told that in, in a, the diameter of a hair, if this is a hair and this is the diameter of the hair, if you go this way, there are one million, one million carbon atoms. One million carbon atoms that way. Or if you were to take an apple, if you were to take an apple and you were to try to get, figure out what fraction, if you were to make one of the, the, the atoms of an apple, and obviously an, ad, an apple has a bunch of different types of atoms in it, but if you were to take one of the atoms and make it the size of the apple, then the apple would be the size of the Earth. 
So an apple atom is to an apple as an apple is to the earth. So these are obviously, you know, it's it's almost it's 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 hard for us to even process things of this size. When you just have one gram of well let's say let's say you have one gram of hydrogen, right? One gram of hydrogen. One gram of hydrogen. One if you have one gram of hydrogen, that means you have one mole of hydrogen. How do I know that? Because hydrogen's atomic mass number is one. So in general, if you just take any any elements, so how much what is the mass of let me just pick one mole of aluminum. One mole of aluminum. So if I were to take six point oh two times ten to the twenty three aluminum atoms, what is the mass of that collection? Well, each of them have an atomic mass number of thirteen, right? So it's thirteen AMUs times I don't have to put the S there, times six point well, I won't write it that way, actually. That'll probably just confuse you. The easy way to think about it is if you have a mole of an atom, you would you take its mass actually I was taking its atomic number, that's not good. You take its mass number, in this case let's say it's twenty seven. You take the so we're we're dealing with aluminum twenty seven. You take its mass number, and if you have one mole, one mole of it, then that will the mass of that will be twenty seven grams. So it literally is a, when you have one mole of an atom, it's a direct translation between its mass number and grams. One mole of iron, let's say iron 56, right? There's obviously many isotopes of iron, but let's say we're dealing with iron 56. You know, we don't hear it like that, but let's say we're dealing with the isotope of iron that has a mass number of 56. So if I have one mole if I, of this, one mole of this atom right here, that's going to have a mass of, the math isn't difficult here, 56 grams. Right? And if you think about it, how many atomic mass units is this? Well, it's 56, it's, this is 56 atomic mass units per atom. Then you have a mole of those, so you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 56 atomic mass units. And then you divide it by the number of atomic mass units per gram and you end up with 56 grams. But the easy way to think about it is you just take whatever the mass number is. If you have silicon, if you have a mole of silicon, a mole of silicon will weight will have a mass, I don't want to say weight cuz this should apply to any planet of 28 grams. What about 2 moles of silicon? 2 moles of silicon and I'll write its mass number. Let's say silicon has a mass number of 20 20 was it 28? Two moles of silicon. Well, one mole would have a mass of 28 grams, so two moles is going to have a mass of 56 grams. 56 grams. If I were to say, let's say I had four moles of oxygen, which has a mass number of 16. How? What is the mass of that? Of this? This is a huge number of oxygen atoms. What would be the mass of that? Well, it would be four times what one mole of oxygen would have a mass of sixteen grams. So four moles has sixty-four grams. Sixty-four grams. It's, it's it's confusing because we're not used to using a word like moles as a number, but all it is is a number, and the easy way to think about it is that it lets us translate between this atomic mass unit number and grams. And you say, well, how do I get that many grams? Well, I have to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms for that, for that collection of carbon to have a mass of 12 grams. That's all that mole means. It's just a number. And I encourage you to kind of play around with a lot of what we talked about. Because it's super important to have the intuition behind moles. Otherwise, you'll get confused later on when you know we start giving the heat, you know, energies in terms of you know it requires kilojoules per mole, and you know what is the energy of this reaction and all of that type of stuff. So just really try to make sure you digest this as well as possible. And let me know if you don't, and I'll maybe make another video on this because it's so important.